Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. All right, I want to say greetings and welcome you again to the program. And we're going to be continuing now in this book of Luke. Uh, I was in our last program, if you was with me, and what I'm wanting to show you now, or Matthew, I'm sorry, it's Matthew. I want you to rehearse with me what this parable Jesus began to speak out of Matthew chapter 21. It's Matthew 21 here in about verse 33 if you want to mark it down. And I want to show you now the real meaning to this scripture when Jesus told them the stone that you builders rejected is the head of the corner. Now, let me just show you now. And also in this same parable, he let them know that the kingdom of God, now not the kingdom of men, but the kingdom of God would be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits. Now that was not saying that Israel has no change, but what that was saying, that God was going to make up in his kingdom a royal people, a holy priesthood and holy nation. And I'm going to show you by the mouth of Peter that the church, we are that nation that David said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Because right now, even in the natural Israel, Jesus Christ is not really truly the Lord as he would want to be to them because you can't say that he's Lord according to 1 Corinthians 12, but by the Holy Ghost. The Bible said no man can say Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, I can call him Lord. I can say, well, sure, he's Lord. He's God. Or he's a son of God. He's a prophet. He's a good man. He's a shepherd. But see, that don't make him that in my life unless I've got the Holy Ghost in me. That's what it means, the Lord of my life. No man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, it don't mean you can't call him Lord as far as saying it personally like you call anybody else. Well, to give an example, Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. But who will? But he that heareth these sayings of mine and do them. That's the ones that's going to enter in by obedience to the gospel. So you couldn't get any plainer than the way Jesus told it. Remember he told the apostles in Matthew 28, 18, 19, he said, go teach all nations. Then in Mark 16, he said, go in all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So you see, doing what the word of God teaches is what makes you saved and Jesus becomes your Lord. So I wanted to give you that now. But I want you to listen to this out of the book of Matthew chapter 21 again. Let me just go over it one more time. In verse 33. Hear another parable. Jesus said there was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it in round about, digged a wine press in it, built a tower, let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. See? He didn't plant something then leave it empty. And when the time of fruit knew, drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandman that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandman took his servants, beat one, killed another, stoned another. Again he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did likewise unto them. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him. Let us seize on his inheritance. And they called him, cast him out of his vineyard, and slew him. Now this is speaking what they was going to do to Jesus. Isn't that something? Telling them ahead of time what they were going to do to him. When the Lord therefore the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen. And here it is. They say unto him, He will miserably destroy the wicked men and let out his vineyard unto other 
husbandmen, which shall render him fruits in their season. See, they have the right answer there. Jesus said unto them, here's your answer. Did you never read in the scriptures? Notice what he said. Scriptures, search the scriptures. The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. That's your leaders. Given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof, and whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. When the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they perceived that he spoke of them. Now watch this. And when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. See, hallelujah. Now, children, they wanted to kill Jesus. And when he told them about this parable, he was representing himself as the stone the builders would reject. Now, did you notice he called himself the stone? All through the Old Testament, you can read about him. Look at Isaiah 28, 16, how perfect. God Almighty is this stone. Because go back and read Isaiah 28, 16. It said, Thus saith the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I lay in Zion. For a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious stone, chief cornerstone, a sure foundation. Don't you know that was Jesus? And did you also ever read in Daniel chapter 2 when Daniel interpreted the dream of Nebuchadnezzar and talked about that stone that was cut out of the mountain which is the power of God without hands and that that stone smote that image that beast upon its feet that was on in clay, which is Roman and Judean. And in the days of these kings, I'll show you later that's done being, the God of heaven would set up a kingdom. See, there's that stone becoming a mountain when Jesus said the kingdom would be taken, given to a nation. Who's that nation? A holy people of God, the church of Jesus Christ. That he said, on this rock I will build. Now listen to me. I know you've got the mother church called Roman Catholic. and They say they're the universal mother of churches. Well, the wrong ones, but they're there. And they have a head over them called the Pope. See? And he says, or they teach that he's a successor to Christ, and they use Peter as a first one. Now, all of this that they're teaching, they come under the rule of these men. The Pope, the fathers, and the priests, and the bishops and so forth and call them Holy Father. They even go and confess to them when they need help. Or they'll pray unto Mary by a statue or some means because that's the way they're taught. Now see, under the days of Jesus when he ran into these Pharisees and Sadducees, they were sitting in Moses' seat. They wanted to be honored as great men. They wanted to sit there and everybody come to them and do whatever they want them to do. And so see, there's no difference now. Church systems today is building up on foundations of men. And if we build a church upon men, then we're rejecting Christ just like they did. You understand? It was the elders that rejected him, the high priests, the Sadducees. And if you read Acts chapter 3 and 4, they didn't even want them to do a miracle in the name of Jesus. See? Now, we're going to show you right now what it means, the kingdom of God being taken from you, them leaders, and given to a nation that would bring the fruits. I'll show you that was the church and who would become the priests of it. Now go with me to the book of 1 Peter. Turn with me in your Bible, 1 Peter chapter 1 here. Or I'm sorry, chapter 2 and verse 1. Now everybody turn in your Bible with me. I want you to hear this. And... Buddy, there's so much that goes with it, but I just have to go as I go. Go to verse 1 of chapter 2, 1 Peter. Peter said, Wherefore, laying aside, talking to the people, all malice, all guile, 
hypocrisies, envies, and evil speakings. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so be you've tasted that the Lord is gracious. Now watch this. To whom coming as unto what? A living stone. Disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. See, God handpicks who he wants. He even told the apostles, you didn't choose me, but I've chosen you. Did you know that I'll show you if you're born to God, you were chosen there. You didn't just get in there because somebody signed you up. I know they teach that you just confess Jesus is Lord or you put your name on our book, but I'll tell you what, if he don't call and choose you, you need to pray and get a hold of him. Because it takes a spirit to put us in this thing. But what did Jesus say? Now watch this. As newborn babes, come on, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Now watch this. Ye also... See, as lively stones are built up, what? A spiritual house, that's that new birth, regenerated. A spiritual house, thank God, and holy priesthood. To offer up spiritual sacrifices, thank God, acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Do you know what that means? You just got in the office of priesthood. Because under the natural law, only the priest could offer up them sacrifices for the people. But now that we're in the kingdom and it's within us, that means we're in a kingdom with a king. This ain't in the future. We can offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable by Jesus Christ and only priests can do that. You say, preacher, are you telling us we're priests? You better believe we are and kings too. God made us unto himself kings and priests. I was in that in our last few programs. This is very important to get back to where we belong in God. See? Now watch your Bible. You also as lively stones build up a spiritual house. Spiritual, spiritual. Holy Ghost home. This house. And holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. How in the world can I take a house here that I live in and make it spiritual? Paul had your answer. He said, Beloved, abstain from all appearances of evil. Remember he said there, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your body a what? Living sacrifice holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Get this home spiritual instead of so much carnal. People so busy with cares and worries and, and deceitful things of this earth, we forgot there is a spirit that works in your heart, your mind, and your soul for your strength. Now, what did he say to do? Watch this. You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Now watch this. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion, see there, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, he that believeth on him, thank God, shall not be condemned or confounded. Unto you therefore which believe, listen, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, which means rejected. What happened? The same is made head of the corner. And a stone, you ready, of stumbling, a rock of offense, even to them that stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. See there? Now, what about you if you're born to God? Watch your Bible. But ye are a what? A chosen generation. A royal priesthood. 
and holy nation. Wow. A peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of Him who's called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Now there's royal blood. Children is God is my helper. This is what that scripture means. When them Sadducees and Pharisees rejected the cancel of Christ. And I'm going to show you in our next program, God willing now, that they even denied the resurrection as Sadducees did, and yet they want to teach the people. You've got people today that deny the word of God that claims to be of God, so it's the same type of boat. But what about the elected? What are you? A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, if you'll continue in this. Now, let me tell you something, children, as God is my helper. If you'll study these things out, when God said you're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, He was telling in this parable to these leaders of Israel that was blinding the people with their own traditions. It's going on now. Remember what Jesus said about the elders that were offended at His sayings? Apostles said, Lord, don't you know they were offended? Jesus said, let them alone. They be what? Blind leaders of the blind. Not blind leaders of people that can see the word of God. Blind, blind leaders of the blind. That was back then. But what about today? Is that same force working? Yes. But this time it's in the God of this world that blinds the minds of them that believe not. Satan's loosed trying to deceive the minds of people. Does he have preachers? Oh Lord I reckon. Transform ministers just like him who wants to be an angel, wants to be worshipped, loves the honor to sit in king's courts. <laughs> ministers just like him. Come on, children, money crazy. The devil's a god of this world. What do you think he needs to keep going? He can't have God, so what does he want? He wants a wealth, a power to rule the money system, and everything else he can get to control the earth and also the kingdoms of the world. He's a huff and puff. But children, Jesus told them in that parable, and it means just what we're reading. When they rejected him, he said, the stone you leaders, you builders rejected. He's ahead of the corner. Now the kingdom of God is taken from you. You're not going to sit in that authority in me. Come on. Hallelujah. They went back and tried to establish it back without him. Christ wasn't in their ways. And that's when the abomination was set up. When they rejected Christ and tried to establish back the law without him. What happened? They rejected him and Jesus said, Your house is left unto you desolate. They committed the abomination that caused that final destruction in 70 A.D. of Jerusalem. I know everybody preaches this in the future, but I will say this much, if God hadn't shortened them days, that days of all that killing, then they would have killed the elect. But God stopped it for the elect's sake. Now, most of this they're teaching out in the future, that three and a half years is going to get its healing back. But God's done put his wound upon that beast. And as God is my helper, when Jesus said to them, you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, that's when these priests and all tried to go back. And Jews in it, building back that law. When they did that, they rejected him. So what did God do? He said the kingdom, the kingdom will be taken from you and given to a nation that will bring the fruits. Now who's ahead of it? Jesus Christ. The nation is the church. Out of every kindred, nation and tongue, ever born again Christian, whether Jew or Gentile, don't matter, is a part of it if you're born again. Now, the abomination, when they tried to establish back their priesthood without him and go back into all of this, then the destruction of Jerusalem, and right now they're wanting to build back that temple. See? And go back into all that offerings. And that'll be your final three and a half years. It's going to end it all up. And sometime during all this, your two prophets will have their part. I mean, children, let's face it, it's about over. Everybody puts everything in the future, but you better know something 
when you study these things. Now, listen to God here. He told us you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people, that you should show forth praises to him that's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, I know I was in this in our last few programs, but let me just rehearse it again to you right quick to show how blessed we are to be Christians, which means Christ-like, if we never get that good. <laughs> but you can, see? But go to Revelation chapter 1 right quick and listen to old John here. These men know what was going on, children, and they know what God had for his people. All right, go with me to Revelation chapter 1 here. Listen to this now. And let me just start at about verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, first begotten of the dead, prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that what loved us, washed us from our sins in his own blood, he's done done it. And hath, not going to, has made us, come on, kings and priests, unto who? Unto God. Honey, you'll never be a priest to this earth. You understand what I'm saying? Made us kings and priests unto God. These bunch of people getting on television wanting you to rule this earth, it ain't going to work. Sorry, children. Get in the kingdom now because he said we're made kings and priests unto God. That's who's got to do this job. See, now watch this. And made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory, dominion forever and ever. And that's why it said there that you are a chosen generation and holy nation. You build up a spiritual house whereby we can serve God acceptably. Can he accept my praises and offerings outside of the Holy Ghost? The answer is no. Can I be born again? Can I be in God's kingdom without the Holy Ghost? The answer is no. But my preacher said, I got to get saved and then come back and get sanctified and then come back and get the Holy Ghost. That's your preacher. But Bible said you're saved. He washed us from our sins in his own blood. We are sanctified. Surely God wouldn't save you and then kick you out of the way. Sanctify means set you apart. Come on, children. You've been taught things. It's not Bible. There's no Bible tells you you're saved without the Holy Ghost. Bible said he saved you with washing of regeneration by the Word of God. What is that regeneration? That's the Holy Ghost, Christ in you. Any man being Christ is a new creature, which means a regenerated person, changed. Come on, we've been translated into the kingdom. But all of this, they're, they're telling you is in the future. Well, am I telling you Jesus isn't coming back here to set up a political kingdom? Yes, I am. Well, when is that kingdom? When you get your heart right with Jesus, when you get born of His Spirit, the kingdom of God is within you. Now let me just give you this. And, and a lot of these leaders, you're going to have to shake them off. You ain't shaking me off. I'm going to hang in there with you. But I'm going to give you no opinion. I'm going to give you the mouth of Jesus Christ. So you're going to have to believe Him. You can get mad at me all you want to. And because your pastor, your daddy said the kingdom's not... Here, honey, I got news for you. If you saved it all, you're in the kingdom. And children, listen. I'm telling you the truth because I love you. You say, well, how do I know you're telling the truth? Well, let me see if I can prove to you or not. All right? Just don't accept my word. Get these good men on your side. Go to the book of, I believe it's Romans. Let me find it now. Chapter uh, 14. You ready? Romans 14 and verse 17. Now you at home, I want you to read this to make sure I'm not telling you wrong. You got it? Romans 14, 17. What does it say? For the kingdom of who? God is not meat and drink. It ain't having a good time in church. Feasting, partying, and kicking around. That ain't your kingdom. It's not meat and drink. What is it? Read it. But righteousness, huh? 
peace, wow. joy, in the Holy Ghost. Could you get any plainer than that? For he that is in, in these things serves Christ. Come on, hallelujah. How'd you get in this kingdom? I hope you got in the way Jesus said a man must be born again. Now, I feel, God, little children, in case some of you are not sure, can I give you a sure foundation to let you know how to get right now into that kingdom? And I'm not giving you an opinion because if God's knocking at you, you're on the right path. If you'll go read the book of Acts, chapter 2, and verse 38, here was the way to enter in. Peter said, read it when you get time, Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? They wanted to know what to do to be saved. Peter said unto them, Repent, first step, and be baptized. Follow it up. Every one of you in the name of who? Jesus Christ. Wonder why him? Well, you find any fault in him? I don't. Who built the church? Upon this rock. Who's the head of the church? Hmm. Who's the savior of the church? Peter said, repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for what? The remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Perfect. The promise is unto you, your children, Jews first, and to all, that's us Gentiles, that are afar off. You know what happened? They that gladly received old Peter's word, they were baptized in the same day the Lord added unto them about 3,000 souls. As I'm closing, looking in that camera. If you want the Holy Ghost, if you'll obey and get baptized in Jesus Christ's mighty name and mean that in your heart, repent, I'll guarantee you, you'll get the Holy Ghost. And if your preacher don't like it, you still get it. So stay with me in our next program. Now, children, I'm going to be taken into the resurrection. It'll probably take me a few more programs, but we're going to the last day. There's no time after your death or the Lord comes. So be ready. God bless you in Jesus' name. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to The Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. All right, I want to say greetings and welcome everybody back to the program today. And I'm going to be speaking a little bit today now concerning not only this living bread, thank God, that we can eat of and live forever, which truly is a spiritual Word of God by not only hearing it but becoming a doer of the Word, then we can become blessed in our deeds. So we do love Him today and appreciate everyone and want to invite you now sometime come out and be with us. We have our church services on Wednesdays and Saturday nights at 7 o'clock in the evening. And also on Sunday we have it 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And we do want to greet everybody and hope we can be a blessing. I'm going to go ahead and get right into the Word of God because I believe it without a doubt that the knowledge of God is going to hold us up in these last days. But now, what I want you to listen to is what Jesus began to teach now concerning His next appearing. And also, letting us know that we can live forever with Him, but now we're going to all have to die in our body unless the Lord comes and there's a change. Because the Bible said it's appointed the man wants to die. But the good news is we live forever with him in that eternal glory at the resurrection. But in the meanwhile, let me show you now by the Bible that the next coming is over. It's going to be the end of it. 
So that means you're going to have to get in the kingdom now. And as far as the secret taken out of here, children, I'm not saying this to be offensive, but it's no Bible. Now, the day of...